The lured mark and the spinnaker douse are opportunities to either make up distance lost in other areas of the race or to maintain on boats gained in previous maneuvers. Order and organization are in the name of the game here so that the driver can take advantage of opportunities that arise during the mark rounding. All douses follow roughly the same process, with the crew hoisting the jib, dropping and stowing the spinnaker pole, dousing the spinnaker, rounding the mark, and trimming in and heading up. These procedures have two phases though. The first is the actual douse of the spinnaker, which may begin well before the two boat length circle. The second is the rounding and trimming of the sails. Because we are instructing for windward lured race courses, it's important to note that when fleet racing, the spinnaker always comes down on the port side of the boat, regardless of the jibe the boat approaches the mark on, or the mark rounded if there is a gate involved. The driver's best way to control the rounding is to recognize the tempo of the douse and initiate the process early, so that the spinnaker is no longer an issue as the boat rounds the mark and the sails are trimmed in. During the first phase of the rounding with the spinnaker coming down, the driver may have to preset the backstay and traveler and may need one last look around for tactical considerations or discussion of overlap with other boats. Once within the two boat length circle, the driver must be focused on the turn the boat makes and the trimming necessary on the main. I always prefer to use the main as the driving force in the turn and let the tiller follow the sail's trim. During the first phase of the rounding, the trimmer is focused on keeping the spinnaker full and pulling even without the pole. Then as the sail drops, the trimmer strips the starboard sheet to be sure that the sail can clear around the boat and pulls the spinnaker down and into the bag. Once the spinnaker is under control enough, the trimmer must go for the jib sheet to round the mark and head up. It's best if all the trimming can be done from the windward side. When dousing, the trimmer has to quickly shift from the precision of trimming the sail to aggressively but carefully dousing the spinnaker. In some cases, the bowman can complete the job if necessary too. The bowman sets the pace and tempo to the douse because his or her actions initiate the first phase of the process. As a result, there are some situations because of the congestion with other boats or a slow to vocalize driver that require the bowman to understand the time and distance necessary to accomplish the job. I encourage bowmen to just begin the process even if I have not said anything because only a bowman knows how long he or she needs. The bowman must preset the outhaul in Cunningham, raise the jib, drop and stow the pole, Release the spinnaker halyard. Hike out and clean up the spinnaker if necessary. And also trim the vang on in the breezier conditions. A windward douse when on port tack requires a specific technique from the bowman for stowing the pole. The bowman must release both ends of the pole, tipping the inboard end up, walk the pole to the starboard side of the jib, and then lay the pole down inside the shrouds and the cabin house. All this is necessary to clear the pole of the jib sheets and prepare for the next windward mark rounding. 
Keep in mind that in order to be successful in defending or seizing an opportunity at the mark rounding, the first phase involving the Dallas of the spinnaker must be complete. Failure to complete the Dallas in time can cost you with a turn that's too wide and little room to tack into clear air if necessary.